Hello, this is Matt Pollan, and welcome to YouTube Live. This chess lesson was recorded from an earlier live broadcast. Okay, so we're going to talk about the Queen's Gambit declined martial defense. And it uh, starts out pawn to queen 4, and black responds d5, double queen pawn. And then c4, this is the Queen's Gambit. So uh, some of the most common uh, forms of the Queen's Gambit declined are e6, the orthodox defense, where uh, black reinforces his pawn on d5. There's c6, the Slav defense, where black also reinforces his pawn on d5. But the following move does not reinforce the pawn on d5, is knight to f6, the uh, martial defense. And this I see a lot from beginners who don't really have a response to the queen's gambit. And uh, it looks logical when you compare it with double king pawn openings, you know, where uh, both players, you know, they play e4, e5, and then they bring all the minor pieces out. Well, knight f6 develops a minor piece to its best square, but it's frowned upon by top-level players because it does not reinforce the pawn on d5. White can and should play pawn takes pawn, you know, trading his c pawn for the opponent's d pawn. And either way this pawn is captured back, white will gain time. For instance, queen takes d5, and then knight to c3, attacking the black queen. This is uh, reminiscent of the center counter defense to e4, but you know, white still has both his center pawns, and black has given up one of his. So uh, yeah, this is not quite as good as the center counter. White will eventually you know, play pawn to e4 and fill his center. There is knight takes uh, d5 as well. This is the more common move. And uh, it allows white to play e4 immediately. Actually, it's thought that knight f3 is the slightly more precise answer uh, to the martial defense. But uh, we're going to get to that in another video, maybe. You'll understand you know, its merits after looking at this stuff. You know, e4 uh, establishes the classical pawn duo of pawns on e4 and d4 and also attacks the knight. Uh, knight b6 is seen sometimes, but the better move is knight to f6, which attacks the pawn on e4. And how does white meet this threat of knight takes e4? Well, uh, there's a cheap trap here. White plays d5, and this is an indirect defense of the pawn on uh, e4. Black, if black is a beginner, he might think that white has forgotten about his pawn on e4. But no, after knight takes, there is this queen a4 check, which uh, wins a piece on e4 and the game. So. Uh, the move at d5 doesn't really improve white's position, though. In fact, it's a bad move. Black can play c6, which blocks the long checking diagonal and also threatens to break apart the uh, white center in addition to you know, threatening to take on e4. So other moves. There is e5, which gains some space on the king side and time on the knight. But after knight d5, black has a good position. There are long-term problems for white. Uh, because black has this knight on d5, which can never be molested by a white pawn. And white has this pawn, uh, this backward pawn on the half-open file. It's just as bad as an isolated pawn, because uh, as long as black maintains this piece blockade on d5, white will never be able to advance this pawn. It will never be able to you know, be defended by another pawn, so white will have to defend it with pieces. So knight c3 is by far the best move, defends on e4, and uh, maintains the pawn duo e4, d4. And here, black has to do something quickly. Otherwise, white will uh, simply develop his pieces, you know, improving his position bit by bit. And black doesn't, at this point, uh, he's just lost a bunch of tempi with his knight. He doesn't really control any space on the board. But if he plays this move, uh, which you know, may even equalize, then he has a fighting chance. And that is e5. And uh, you know, with a little bit of imagination, you can see why you know, people recommend playing knight to f3 you know, before playing e4, because it prevents this move. So e5, and uh, what can white do about the threat of taking on d4? White can release the tension by pushing to d5, but you know, this push, as usual, doesn't really improve the white position. Black can just develop with bishop to c5. It's a very good diagonal since white has pushed all the pawns past the dark squares. 
uh, some kind of a quick strike on F2 might happen. Uh, in addition, what Black may consider just castling his king away and then going to attack the white center. So there are two serious moves here. Uh, one of them is pawn takes pawn. It looks like white has just recovered a pawn, but uh, after queen takes check, you know, knight takes is not really possible because black equalizes with knight takes e4. So there's king takes, and it's not such a big deal to move one's king once the queens are off the board. In fact, as the end game approaches, you want your king to be uh, near the center. So then there's knight to g4. This attacks uh, you know, two pawns, winning a pawn back. And uh, the f2 square is important more than the pawn, because if f4, then there's knight to f2 check, winning the rook in the corner. This is a very important theme uh, in any opening where the queens are traded extremely early, this uh, you know, knight attacking the bishop seven square. So what else is there? There's bishop to e3, which I think is an interesting move. If knight takes, pawn takes, then you know, the white knight is threatening to move to b5 or d5 to you know, threaten this uh, fork. So black should play c6 to take both those squares away. And now black has a bishop pair, White has an extra pawn, but his extra pawn is a triple isolated pawn. A very interesting struggle of material versus structure coming up. Uh, there's also a knight to d5. In this line, white announces he will trade rooks with black. So there's knight takes check, king over, knight takes rook. Knight takes check, king over, knight takes rook. And both sides have a plan to recuperate the knight in the corner. But uh, I think that black has a slightly better chances here because of the potential weakness of the white center pawns. There's knight h3, probably the best move, just defending on f2. And now it's possible to play bishop to e6, blockading and watching the d5 square, but I think black should just capture on e5. Then there's knight to d5, which threatens the fork on c7, again, a very common theme, and then bishop d6 defending. So now white has this little pawn roller, uh, f4, threatening to take the knight, so knight retreats to g6, and now e5 threatening to take the bishop, and there's also this fork if the bishop moves. But black has this counterattack, c6. Now this knight can just move, but then the bishop will just move. Or white can go in for this trade, pawn takes, pawn takes. Either way, I don't see this as being any worse for black. So that is uh, pawn takes pawn. There's also knight f3, which tries to maintain the tension. Now, uh, black can try to maintain the tension as well. He can play moves like uh, bishop to g4, pinning this knight, or bishop to b4, pinning this knight. But both of those moves actually turn out to be a little worse for black. I think uh, black should just capture that now on the d4. And again, there are two ways for white to take. One is to play knight takes, and now bishop to c5 threatens the knight on d4 twice. And if the knight moves, then uh, black will just trade queens on d1. So bishop to e3 developing and protecting the knight. Now black castles, and the idea of castles is to play rook e8, getting on the half-open uh, file, because you know, white's king is still sitting here. So white has this move, uh, knight e6, this is the most aggressive try. It looks silly, but the point is, it is tactically you know, an attack on the queen, the rook, and also the bishop on c5. The best way for black to play is to play bishop takes knight. Now bishop takes bishop. And uh, queen takes is uh, not really a good move because white would just play rook takes and improve the position of his rook. So rook e8, and now queen takes queen, rook takes, bishop to e7 forces a structural weakness. However, after rook to d4, uh, bishop takes, pawn takes, sure, there are shattered pawns on black's king side, but black has a very powerfully placed rook in the center. And in addition, he has a three on two queen side pawn majority, which is more valuable than uh, white's four on three majority. So there is also queen takes. And uh, this is possibly better 
After queen takes queen, knight takes bishop to c5, again attacking the knight. There's knight to b5 threatening the fork on c7. So knight a6 defends, and now bishop to f4. And uh, you know, c6 is not a good move because uh, it allows white to win the bishop pair for nothing. So black can either passively defend you know, with bishop to b6, or he can play king e7. This is the most active move. Uh, it allows the rook to uh, develop. It defends this square on d6, you know, so preparing to play c6. Uh, the only downside of this move is it does lose a pawn. After bishop takes, you know, black can play bishop to e6. And although black is down a pawn, he's doing quite well here uh, because he's ready you know, to start thinking about developing his rooks and maybe a quick attack on f2 as well. So I would, would say that there's definitely enough compensation here for a pawn. Well, thank you for watching this introduction to the martial defense on the queen